Magandang magandang araw mga kaibigan Welcome to the UCM Interface Bible Study Podcast Isang Bible Study Podcast by Pinoy's for Pinoy's Hosted by UCM Interface Ang Young Adults Community ng Union Church of Manila Staglish Conversational, Expository, or Inductive Study Method Di kami experts, most of us are young professionals But we do try our best to study context And let scripture speak for itself Sa aming mga book studies and special topics Yung goal namin is to provide you with materials To help you live, work, speak, and serve as a follower of Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining us! At kung trip nyo tong ginagawa namin, please subscribe and share with your friends and family. Okay, introduction! Hello, ako po si Maggie. Atleta pa rin sa awa ng Diyos. <laughs> ako si Gunnar, nagtatrabaho sa isang multinational software company sa Makati. At ako naman si Rainier, ang Young Adult Ministry Director ng Union Church of Manila. And this is Gooch, commercial voice artist. Tuloy tayo sa ating current series na Parables in Luke And I'm actually not sure if I should feel happy or sad to announce this Pero we are almost at the end of this series Wow Sinapat yan, ha 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 hu 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 Sinimula natin to last June 2020 So grabe, isang taon na rin tayo Kalahin mo yun, diba? oh. Next season na tayo Season 5 <laughs> uh, Secret pa lang kung anong next season. Pero ang, ang sigurado lang yan, isa na namang libro sa Bible. <laughs> I mean, we did mention in the beginning na we're not gonna cover all parables. So, kung hindi na cover yung and favorite uh, parable niyo. Favorite mo. <laughs> sorry na lang. Hindi, baka alam na nila paano aralin. Natutunan na nila. <laughs> Oo nga, marunong na sila. Kaya okay na. Ayan, but uh, sa episode na to, which is our second to the last parable, Ang pag-uusapan natin ay yung parable of the rich man and Lazarus sa Luke 16, 19 to 31. Um, it's not a very popular parable. It's not top of mind na pag sinabing rich man and Lazarus, parang, ako oh, nga pala, parable nga pala yun, ano? Mm. Palagay ko dun sa mga lumaki sa simbahan, familiar sila dito eh. Pero hindi ito kasing popular nung mga Good Samaritan. Yeah. Alam mo Which, kahit somebody who doesn't know the Bible or anything. Right. Ako narinig ko tong parable na to pag nag discussion na na ng uh, doctrines about what happens when you die. Ah. Pero hindi siya yung sa normal na ano, para life lessons or para mm. moral. Una ko siyang na-encounter is when someone was talking about what happens when you die, whether you go to heaven ba immediately or ano, mga ganong klaseng questions. Mm. So, uh, but anyway, I think, yeah, parang it's about uh, reversal, tama ba? Yes. Yeah, so, kasi itong ating parable ngayon, may ganong tema. It's a story of reversal. Alam niyo, yung mga biglang nabaligtad ang sitwasyon. Katulad na lang nung isang very popular na children's story, mm. mga fairy tales tulad ng Cinderella. Aping api, tapos yung kanyang mga ugly sisters, mayayabang, inaapi siya. But in the end, nabaligtad yung sitwasyon. Pinapanood kong anime nung bata ko yung mga Princess Sara, yung mga ganong klase. <laughs> yung feeling na, kawawa naman siya, aping api. Lagi siyang inaapi ni ganyan. Tsaka kasi ganito, lagi siyang inaapakapakan. Oh. Tapos uh, sa dulo, I actually don't remember the story. But I do know that it was happy ending, I think. Siya na angat yung mga mayayabang na mm. brought down. Pero grabe, very dramatic itong reversal na to. Kasi yung katalasang alam nating reversal, nangyari lahat sa lupa. Aba ito, sa kabilang buhay nangyari yung reversal. Kaya matinding matindi itong kwento na to. Okay, before we go to our discussion, let's go to our reading. 3, 2, 1, and... Luke 16, 19-31 There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner, bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, 
great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Structure of discussion. Yes. Yeah. Ano yung issue na ina-address ni Jesus? Ano yung background? Ano yung eksena? Sino yung kausap niya? Next, we'll go through the parable. And then after that, ano yung response that Jesus is asking from his audience and also us? Mm-hmm. And also after that, so what? Personal reflection? Ano yung mga takeaway natin? Okay, Rainier. Ito namang ating parable. It's like a narrative parable katulad nung lost son. No? Kwento siya talaga. Pero dito, para mas maintindihan natin to, kasi alam natin konektado to dun sa previous parable na diniscuss din natin dun sa ating last episode. The shrewd manager. The yeah. shrewd manager. May kita natin dito yung tungkol sa alam mo yun, yung value din ng pera. Uh-huh. Diba? Uh-huh. Ano yung halaga ng pera sa isang tao dapat na bang pinagpapahalagahan ito? Yeah. Diba? May, meron tayong mga diniscuss na ganyan. Now, tutuloy pa rin yan. One of the big issues na lumabas doon is sa verse 14, yung reaction ng Pharisees, they were ridiculing Jesus kasi they yes. were lovers of money. Because they were lovers of money. But notice that immediately after that, is also a very brief exposition of Jesus about the law and the prophets. Mm-hmm. Important ito dahil babangkitin din ito sa kwento dito sa rich man and Lazarus. Merong continuity talaga eh. Tapos na yung kwento ng shrewd manager, pero yung values na gustong ituro ni Jesus, yung lessons na gustong ituro ni Jesus, itutuloy pa niya dito sa parable of the rich man and Lazarus. How people value money, ano yung may attachment pa sila sa wealth, katulad ng Pharisees na nirebuke ni Jesus because the Pharisees are lovers of money. And then it continues with Jesus affirming the validity of the law and the prophets. Mm-hmm. At itong dalawang elemento na yan, tutuloy pa yan dito sa parable of the rich man and Lazarus. So ituloy na natin. Oh, In verses 19 to 21, ano, dito tayo sa unang section ng kwento. So pakibasa. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. Pinakilala sa atin dalawang characters. You have the rich man, and then of course Lazarus. I-compare muna natin silang dalawa. Para niya nilarawan yung rich man versus... The poor man. Mukhang yung rich man talagang mataas ang kinalalagyan sa lipunan kasi nakaklothed pa in purple. Di ba royal color yun? It's a royal color. Oo, totoo yan. Alam ko, mahirap siya i-produce nung panahon na yun. Yung mahirap gawin yung particular dye na yun or something. Mm. Expensive. Yes, it's very rare. Nakukuha mo lang ito from a uh, mollusk. Doon kinukuha yung tint na to na color purple. So, mahal siya and then mahirap siya gawin. So, if you're dressed in purple, it's like, Wow, big time. Labis-labis. Mm. Oh, big time ka. Mayaman ka talaga. Yung feasted sumptuously, yung assumption ba dito is mag-isa siya or feasting ba na may mga kasama siyang iba so parang party everyday? Could be both. It could be both. O sinasabi lang na hindi lang siya basta kumakain. Mm. Uh, talagang samgyup everyday, parang ganyan. Sobra-sobra. <laughs> Oo. Hindi siya nagpapa food panda, delivery, <laughs> o kaya grab food. Hindi siya marunong nun. Bakit? Eh, meron naman siyang sariling chef sa bahay. Okay, so, dun pala may kita natin kung gaano siyang kayaman. Hmm. Pero eto pe, may isang detalye dito na kakaiba. Kasi bukod sa sinabing he was dressed in purple, he was also dressed in fine linen. Alam niyo ba yung tinutukoy dito? Pag sinabing fine linen, that's his undergarment. Kumbaga, underwear. 
Wow. Hanggang doon. Branded. Sa siyang. Yes. Oo. Oh, oh. Louis Vuitton. Oh, oh. Louis Vuitton. <laughs> diba? Yun pala yung fine linen. <laughs> yun yun eh. Yung mga detalying ganito, mahalaga. Kaya dito pala may kita mo na masyado talagang pronounce yung kanyang yaman. So yung ginagawa ni Jesus, parang this is a um, caricature of how rich this man is. It's like ridiculously rich. Probably, oh. oh he is ridiculously wealthy. He is living in luxury. Mm. Yeah. And then, which is in contrast to the next character, na exad sa hirap naman. Okay, in contrast to the beggar. Uh-huh. Oh, itong poor man. Actually, meron pang maski nga nung binanggit na itong si Lazarus, meron pa ring detail na nabanggit tungkol dun sa rich man. Kasi nasaan ba si Lazarus? Sa gate. May gate. Pag may gate ka, nung mga panahong yun, ibig sabihin, napakalaki talaga ng bahay mo. Mayamang ka talaga. E yung ordinaryong bahay naman, walang gate eh. Mm. Alam mo yun, pag bukas mo ng pintuan mo, kalsada na. Yun na yun. So, dun pa lang, may pahabol pa na detalye. Ah. <laughs> Tungkol sa yaman, di ba? So, ganun talaga kayaman. Exage kung gano'ng kayaman tong si Richman. Ay, ganun kaya. Exage. Pero, paano describe itong si Lazarus, itong poor man? Paano siya describe? He's covered with sores. Oh. Ano lang yung scraps from the rich man's table, yun yung inaabangan niya. Not necessarily nakukuha niya, pero yun yung inaasahan niya. Not necessarily nakukuha kasi he was longing. Desired eh. Oh. Yeah, he desired. Mm-hmm. At bukod pa doon, ano yung kahindik-hindik na nangyayari? Yung mga aso, dinidilaan yung sores niya. Hindi ba madumi sa kanila yun? <laughs> Maski may breed pa yung asong yan. Para sa isang mm-hmm. hudyo, ang aso ay aso. Yes. And therefore, unclean. unclean. Ah. Kaya kung titingnan mo, hindi lang siya financially or economically deprived. Downtrodden. Yung sa status niya sa society, hindi lang sa ganong sense. But also, the fact that even dogs were licking his sores, his wounds, ano ang turing sa kanya? Socially isolated din siya? Pinabayaan talaga siya. Yung walang may pakailam sa kanya. Pinabayaan. Ibig sabihin ba nito, ba't di siya tumakbo mula dun sa mga aso? So parang nakahiga lang siya dun? Malamang ganun because he was probably in pain. Dahil puro sugat yung katawan niya. Mm. Kaya wala rin siyang magagawa, di ba? Hindi talaga siya mobile. Yeah. Hindi rin siya mobile. Mm-mm. So I guess yung characters ni Jesus dito is uh, may exage sa yaman na parang umaapaw sa yaman. At yung isa naman, exage sa hirap na talagang um, kawawang kawawa talaga to. Oo. But Jesus being a very good storyteller, meron siyang ginamit na device. Notice that the rich man was not even given a name. Mm, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But the poor man was given a name and his name is Lazarus. Lazarus. And Lazarus is a very common name. Ito yung Greek form ng Eleazar. Eleazar is the Hebrew name. Lazarus is the Greek form of Eleazar. Eh, ano bang ibig sabihin ng Eleazar? He whom God has helped. Mm. Okay? Diba? Very symbolic. Pero teka lang, para may irony. Uh, teka, if indeed Lazarus is the one that God has helped, tingnan mo naman yung situation niya. Asan doon ang tulong ng Diyos? Right. Uh-huh. So, mapapaisip ka kaagad sa kwento. Mm. Ganda niya na. Lazarus, how ironic. E, kita mo naman yung situation niya. Iisipin mo, kung ikaw yung nakikinig dun sa story, ay... Ang finavor ni God ay yung mayaman. Parang ganun. Tinulungan niya yung mayaman. Yes. His name is a mockery. Parang ganun pa. Parang ganun pa tuloy yung dating that the name of Lazarus is actually a mockery. Mm. Right. But dun sa kwento. So, tingnan natin. Ituloy pa natin yung kwento natin. Ano? So, punta na tayo dito sa susunod na section in verses 22 to 24. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. Meron nangyari dun sa dalawa nating characters. There's a rich man who was not named, and then the poor man who was given a name, Lazarus. Dito sa verse 22, ano daw yung nangyari sa kanilang dalawa? Chugi sila parehas. GG. GG na GG. <laughs> no, pareho silang natigok. Okay, ngayon, tingnan natin yung description. Yeah. You know, how their deaths were described. Right. Sabi dito, the poor man died, but after that, he was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. Yeah. Or bosom. Right, but was there a mention of Lazarus getting buried? Wala. Wala, Wala. ano? Wala. Parang namatay. Pero yung rich man, ano daw? Only living. What was proper, ginawa para dun sa rich man. 
So, kita nyo yun. In life and in death. So, all the way to the end, wala pa rin. All the way to the end of his life in this world. Uh-huh. Wala. Yung treatment sa kanya, ganun pa rin. I see. Yung rich man lang ang malakas. Siya lang. May karapatan. Si may libing. Oh, may libing siya. Nevertheless, kahit ganun pa man, he was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. Okay, medyo kailangan i-analyze natin ito. Iba-ibang translations ang sinasabi yung iba, bosom of Abraham. Yung sa NIV side, ano ba yung mga nakalagay dyan sa inyo? Side. SV side, pero may footnote na bosom. Yep. Okay, kasi ganito yan, ano? Ewan ko, biglang naiisip ko dito yung kanta namin ng bata kami eh. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Na hindi ko naman maintindihan kung ano yung bosom of Abraham na yan. Kanta lang ng kanta. Kala ko, Abraham add many sons. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> pala. Wrong song. Pero ano kaya ibig sabihin nun? Natatandaan niyo ba yung sa... Ito may kita mo pa rin to dun sa Last Supper na painting na ginawa ni Leonardo da Vinci. Si John ba yun? Mm. O, ano yung position ni John? Kung ano, yung humilig siya sa breast. Jesus. Yon. Although, of course, that's a very Western interpretation. Nakalagay din naman talaga sa text that, you know, he was resting on Jesus' chest or something like that. Kasi, ganito ang picture niyan. Naalala niyo ba na, di ba yung kanilang vision of what it's like to be in the kingdom of God? Ano yung nai-imagine nila? What was going to happen when they get there to God's kingdom? There will be a... Feast. Banquet. Feast. A banquet, di ba? Tama, meron. Pero kung natatandaan nyo, yung layout ng kanilang tables ng araw, which is called the triclinium. Yung you. Uh, walang upuan. Walang upuan, di ba? And how would they position themselves? Ngayon, yung katabi ng host, yun ang pinaka-special na lugar. Right. Eh, di ba, magkakadikit sila habang kumakain. Yung katulad ng ginawa ni John dun sa Last Supper, humilig siya or he rested his head on the chest of Jesus. Kasi pag nagkakwentuhan kayo, ganun talaga. That's inevitable. Mapapadikit ka dun sa dibdib nung nasa likuran mo. Kasi lahat kayo nakarecline eh. Mm-hmm. Lahat kayo nakarecline, but you are reclining on one side. Uh-huh. So, there's a tendency to sort of also recline on the chest of the person next to you. Yun yung ibig sabihin dito nun. That we find Lazarus on the side of Abraham, meaning sa ibang translations, bosom mm-hmm. of Abraham. Kasi nakahilig siya dun sa dibdib ni Abraham na nangangahulugan din ano ang posisyon ni Lazarus doon sa hapagkainan. Most honored guest. Yes. Siya yung pinaka-special na bisita <laughs> sa lahat. Katabi niya yung patriarch, the father of the nation, meaning he was beside the host. The position of highest honor is to be reclining right next to the host. Ang host na to si Abraham. So nandun siya sa pinaka-special. Kaya ito yung dapat nating makita na picture dito. So, kumusta naman itong rich man? Kumusta naman siya? Nasa naman siya? Yung ginamit dito, Hades eh. Right. Hades ang ginamit na salita. And kumusta yung kanyang sitwasyon? In torment siya. He was distressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, hindi, hindi maganda ang kanyang kinalalagyan. Opposite. Hindi maganda ang kanyang kinalalagyan. Yeah, itong Hades would sometimes be translated in our Bibles as hell. But in the Septuagint, ano yung Septuagint? The Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible. Minsan tawag nyo LXX yan, sa Septuagint. Instead of uh, Hades, ang tawag na dyan ay Sheol. 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 Okay. Yeah. At ano naman itong Sheol na to? It, this is just a place for the dead. Yeah, the okay. underworld. Right, it's the underworld. And here, kumbaga, yung Hades seems to be, or Sheol, seems to be a temporary place or an interim place of torment. Hindi pa ito yun. <laughs> okay. So, kumbaga, we, we get this sense, at least in this parable, that Hades is the place of the wicked dead. And it's still an interim place. Mm. So, appetizer pa lang to ng... So, may susunod pa. Ay, wala pa. Wala pa to dun sa main dish na mas matindi pang torment. <laughs> wala pa. Oo, kasi ultimately, these wicked dead will be thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, so ganun yung concept nila that this is their cosmology. Oh, yeah. Ganun yung pagkakaintindi nila. So, dito pa lang, nakita na natin yung reversal. Mm-hmm. Ibang-iba na agad. But what's curious, pag tingala daw niya, nakita niya si Abraham ang layo-layo at nasama si Lazarus. Okay, ito nga, ito yung mga elementong medyo, bakit pag nasa Sheol ka, may kita mo yung ganun kalayo? Ano yan? Telescopic ba yung iyong mga mata? So again, because this is a parable, there are certain elements that could be exaggerated. 
But it's here, and this is how it's narrated, to make the parable work. Kasi ang big gusto mangyari si Jesus dito. And later, we will see the interaction between Abraham and the rich man. So that's the whole point. This is not teaching us any doctrine mm-hmm. about the afterlife. That when you are in Sheol, okay, you're in torment. Pero grabe naman yung vision mo. May kita mo yung talas. ganyan. Oo. Tapos sa harap mo may nagpe-piesta, may kumakain ng buffet. <laughs> Tapos meron kang megaphone na pwede kang tumawag doon sa kabila. Uh, oh, di ba? Parable to eh. This is a parable. We might be stretching it too far if we're trying to get so many details out of this. Right, right. But it seems to fit the whole cosmology of the Jews. That they know that, you know, in the afterlife, because they're children of Abraham, they will be reunited with the father of the nation. And they will be there celebrating kasama sila dun sa grand banquet with all the patriarchs. Mm. So ngayon, ikaw, kung nakita mo to, si Abraham, kasama si Lazarus, at nandun pa sa position ng honor, ano ang mararamdaman mo? Siyempre, di ba? Kung ikaw yung rich man. May medyo indignant kasi go. Exactly. Kasi hindi yun yung expect mo na afterlife. Eh. Position of honor siya, di ba? Siguro naman, dyan ako. Or mas deserve ko yung position na yan. Oo, oh, mas deserve ko yung pwesto na yan kaysa sa kanya. Oo, kasi mas bagay naman yata na yung kwento eh. Gawin natin kung ano yung buhay ko sa mundo, ituloy na lang natin the afterlife. Ganun pa din. Mas maganda siguro yung takbo ng kwento kaso hindi ganun eh. Nagkaroon nga ng reversal. Kaya ngayon, nung nakita niya ito na magkasama si Lazarus at si Abraham, ano ngayon ang ginawa niya in verse 24? Parang inuutusan niya si Abraham, isend si Lazarus para iserve siya kasi daw in anguish siya. Parang parehas pa rin yung tingin niya kay Lazarus, di nagbago. Hanggang dun sa kabilang buhay, ano? Yung pa rin iniisip niya. Oo, hanggang sa kabilang buhay. Nagpipiyas na si Lazarus doon, gusto niyang i-interrupt yung celebration ni Lazarus Oo. para i-servisyohan siya. Parang si Abraham pa yung inutusan niya, you know? ang weird. Kita mo yon hanggang sa kabilang buhay at kahit nandun na sa Shashio, or sa Hades, ano pa rin ang tingin niya kay Lazarus? Masababa pa rin sa kanya or something na pwede niya utus-utusan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pero hindi ba to ano? Kaya hindi niya kinausap si Lazarus. Baka rin feel niya na baka hindi ako pansin ni Lazarus kasi buong buhay niya hindi ko siya pinansin <laughs> sa gate ko eh. Diba? Dinadaan-daanan ko lang to nung buhay ako eh. So... Pero tingnan mo, alam niya yung pangalan ni Lazarus. Hmm. Ayun nga, ah. oo. Diba? Alam niya yung pangalan, aware kasi siya na palaging nandun. Sa gate sa niya. Sa gate niya. Alam niya yan. Na-identify niya yan. Nakikita niya yun sa CCTV oh, niya. Oo. Eh. Pag check siya ng CCTV, nakikita, o yan na naman. Oh. Ay, ito na naman si Lazarus, oh. Puro galis. Yan naman yung mga aso. Buti nga sana kung may sobrang pagkain, ibibigay sa kanya. Hindi nga. Kaya nga sabi kanina, ba? He was even longing. Baka mamaya pinagdamutan pa siya. But the fact that he knew the name of Lazarus, aware siya dun sa existence ni Lazarus. Mm. Pero hanggang dun ba naman sa Hades, ang baba pa rin ng tingin niya kay Lazarus and he is just someone na pwede pa rin niyang utusan. Pero hindi niya dinerecho kay Lazarus, pinadaan niya kay Abraham. Abraham. Ang tingin ko dito suplado talaga eh. Parang pang Abraham level lang ako, kaya si Abraham lang yung kakausapin ko, ganun. Hindi <laughs> ako tumakausap ng mga ganyan, mga level na ganyan. Oh, kaya Abraham tayo mag-usap pa, pakiutusan nga sa Oh, parang boss to boss. Boss to boss ang usapan. <laughs> ang baba pa rin talaga ng tingin niya kay Lazarus. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pala nagbabago yung puso niya, no? Ganun pa rin kung sino siya nung nasa lupa pa siya. Walang pagbabago, no? There was no change of heart, walang humility. Ganun na talaga yata, no? So, tingnan natin mm-hmm. kung ano pa ang susunod kasi ano ba yung request niya. Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am in anguish in this flame. Hirap na hirap na raw siya eh. Medyo ano, mas mainit pa sa summer ng Pilipinas pala to. Pwede pala yun ano? <laughs> <laughs> Pwede pa pala yun. Diba? Pero ang inuutos niya, dip the tip of his finger in water tapos kailangan bumaba si Lazarus dito. Tapos ilalapat niya yun sa tila ko kasi talaga nahihirapan na ako. Grabe, no? Utusan. Mm-hmm. Walang nagbago kung paano niya tingnan si Lazarus. Pero bakit finger lang? Eh? Parang hindi oh, isang eh. cup. Oh, have him bring a cup of water. Oh. Hindi na niya eh. nilahat. <laughs> bakit kaya ganun, ano? Yung parang playing on the exaggerations din mm-hmm. dito. Exaggerated mm-hmm. rich man. Exaggerated si Lazarus na mahirap. And then ngayon, exaggerated na. Ganun ka desperate. Desperado na siya. <laughs> Kasi kailangan niya magmukhang kaawa-awa kay Abraham. Sila lang naman ang nag-uusap dito ni Abraham eh. 
Si Lazarus, utusan lang naman yan eh. Mm. So, kailangan magmukha siyang kaawa-awa talaga kay Abraham. Kaya sabi, kahit dulo lang ng daliri, yun lang, okay na ako. Pero, lingwahe mo lang yan kay Abraham. Kasi sa kabila nun, utusan pa rin si Lazarus. Yes. Grabe, mm. no? Magbigyan yeah. mo na ako kasi hindi naman sangkap yung inihingi ko. San dropper. Dala ka medicine dropper. <laughs> okay, so pagdating natin, lilipat na tayo dito sa verse 25 to 26. Ito na yung may kita natin na sa section na to, medyo huli na ang lahat. Kasi, tingnan natin, verses 25 to 26. Sige nga. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. Oh. None shall pass. May, mukhang, may impossible na talaga. This is mission impossible. Alright, so your request cannot be granted. Ito na. Sabi kasi ni Abraham, and notice how he addressed the rich man. Tinawag niyang? Child, child no? Child daw eh. Or child. son, yeah. Child or son, okay? Anak. Ngayon, bakit anak? Kasi kung anak ka talaga ni Abraham, bakit nandun siya? Wala siya dun sa party. It doesn't matter. Mm. Or, he's a son only in what sense? Descendant mm. in the flesh. In the flesh. Totoo naman kasi eh, because he's a descendant. Physically speaking, yes. Anak kita, descendant eh, di ba ni Abraham? Only by race mm. na tayo ay magkadugo, magkamag-anak. But not in a spiritual sense. Alright? Ito yung sabi niya nga niya. Kasi nung buhay ka naman, okay ka eh. Sa'yo ng lahat eh. Tapos si Lazarus, marami siyang kulam. Wala siyang makain. Wala siyang natutuloy ang bahay. Pero ngayon, siya naman ang nakakatanggap ng comfort. At ikaw naman ngayon na nahihirapan. Ang weird no? Ang weird nitong sagot na to. Ibig sabihin ba nun, ano, huwag tayo mag-enjoy dito sa Earth? Kasi... Mauubos na yung enjoyment dito sa Earth pagdating sa heaven. <laughs> oh, So, Gunnar, dahil sa ating apat, ikaw ang pinakamaraming pera, alam mo na kung saan ka pupunta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kaya ako nagtatanong ngayon eh. <laughs> Uh, just to remind yung ating audience, as we had discussed with our previous parables then, and also from the introduction episode one year ago, mm. the parables are addressing certain context, diba? Critique sa kanya to a certain scenario. They're answers, but in story form. Mm. Uh-huh. They're always pointing to a certain punchline. Yun yung importante. May pinapatama again si Jesus dito, diba? And it is the, the Pharisees. Yeah. Uh, as we have seen in verse 14. Right. In verse 14, verse 14, totoo. For they were lovers of money. Right. It's not teaching yep. like, pagka mayaman ka, if you have a lot of money, this is where you're gonna go. If you're poor, this is where you're gonna go. <laughs> That's not the point <laughs> of this parable. The, context. <laughs> may context siya. Oh, may context. May pinapatama to. Hindi to out of a vacuum. Yeah, so hindi ito nagtuturo ng salvation by economic status. Someone who's reading this cursorily would look at it. Oh, so ano ba to? Parang dapat ba ako magilty kasi nag-enjoy ako ngayon sa buhay ko? Uh, or right? yeah, is it talking yeah. about something else? Mm. And so that's why we're doing this podcast. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right. And that's why we also have the parable of the shrewd manager, partly to answer that question. Then. Right. <laughs> Kaya nga para baka kayo gumawa ng sarili yung doctrine salvation by economic status. Eh, baka lahat na lang tayo eh magpakadukha eh. Eh, hindi yun dyan nakukuha. Alright? So, tama yun. Paalala, this is a context. And in fact, this is a continuation of the previous parable. Ando pa rin yung same thought. So, ang na-address dito yung attitude ng Pharisees who are lovers of money. Mm-hmm. Just also to remember then, I think in Romans yata, ministry partners ni Paul were business people. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Priscilla, Aquila. Priscilla, and Aquila. Oh, si Priscilla, uh, si Aquila. So, yes, mm-hmm. and also, most of the hosts of the early churches, and remember, these are household churches, mm-hmm. they're wealthy people kasi sila lang yung mga malalaking bahay who can accommodate mm-hmm. a group. Yeah. Kasi household church lang sila dun eh. Or rather, house church. Kaya kung sino yung mga mayaman, may space, sila yung nag-host nung church. Para lang maklaro na hindi tayo anti-rich. Yep. Yes. Okay. So, may sinabi dito si Abraham sa verse 26. Nasabi niya, eto pe, imposible ne. Ano daw yung imposible? 
Uh, besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us. So, wala na. Wala, wala na. lipatan. Uh, final answer na to. Final answer. Oo. Oh, oh. Kung ano yung nahantungan mo ngayon, that's it. Hanggang dyan ka na lang. Wala nang lipatan. Permanent na, ha? Wala na. Hindi na pwedeng tumawit. Yun ang sabi ni Abraham. Wala nang mababago sa fate ninyo. At, wala na ring pwedeng tumawit hanggang dito na lang tayo. Cha parang ini-imply niya no, kahit na gusto kitang i-save diyan, hindi talaga pwede. Ah, Assuming na. na gusto ko no. <laughs> Iba usapan yeah. pa yun. Assuming <laughs> lang, assuming <laughs> lang oh, pero wala na Kasi talaga. Parang physically impossible kitang ma-reach or oh. you mm. and vice versa. Right. So tanggap na niya na. Okay, tanggap ko na na permanent na to. Kaya ang sabi niya sa verse 27, and dito na tayo. Ito na yung kanyang last ditch effort. Huling huling hirit. Ano kaya yung huling hirit na lang ni Richman? And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house. <laughs> Inutusan na naman. Hirap. <laughs> Inutusan pa rin. Hindi man lang ano, no, send someone. Hindi <laughs> kasi si Lazarus, alam niyo yung bahay niya. So parang hindi na rin Oh, nga naman. <laughs> so, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Ah, dahil wala nang mangyayari sa sitwasyon ko, hindi man lang ma-relieve yung torment na experience ko dito. Wala nang relief doon. Ano na lang kaya ang posible? Warn yung other family members ko kasi baka matulad sila sa akin. Ah, pero kita mo, may concern pala siya, may compassion siya. Pero para kanino lang? Pamilya sa kapamilya. Di ba? Hanggang dun lang yung naaabot ng compassion niya. So, madamot pa rin. Kami-kami lang. Kami-kami lang. Madamot pa din siya. Kasi si Lazarus nga, hanggang sa kabilang buhay, utusan pa rin eh, no? Pero kita mo, ang kaya lang niyang pakita ng compassion, ang kaya lang niyang pakita ng love, yung kapwa lang niya. Hindi ito yung love na pinapakita sa atin ni Jesus. Eh. It's a sacrificial love. It's mm-hmm. loving the unlovable. Hanggang enemies. If you love only those who love you, what difference do you have from sinners? Sabi. Exactly. Right. So, ngayon, Ano naman ang sagot ni Abraham? So, verse 29, But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Uy, ito naman pala. May sagot na pala. May sagot na? Nanda dyan na eh. <laughs> Hindi na kailangan ng pinapautos mo kay Lazarus. Hindi na siya importante kasi may sagot na. Which is the scriptures. Yung scripture nila. Moses and the prophets. Kung natatandaan nyo sa verses 16 up to 18, yan din yung binagbabasihan ni Jesus. The law and the prophets. The validity of the law and the prophets, pinagpapahalagahan mm-hmm. yan. The law and the prophets meaning their scripture. At meron silang access doon because they're Jews. Puntahan lang nila yon, alam na nila dapat ang sagot. Pero, ito bang rich man? Nag-agree ba siya kay Abraham? Hindi daw eh. Sabi niya sa verse 30, And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Maganda tong idea ko eh. Alam mo, Abraham, papatok to eh. <laughs> Grabe no, sinabihan pa niyang mali si Abraham. <laughs> Mas maganda yung idea niya. Kailangan may miracle daw na kasama yung warning. Parang yun yung sinasabi niya. Naman. Eh. Kailangan bongga. Hindi pwede yung scripture lang. Mm-hmm. Oh, and interesting din dito is that itong plano na to, pagka nangyari to, they will repent. Sure. Which means, alam naman pala niya kung ano yung sinasabi sa Moses and the Prophets, which is to repent. Alam pala niya yung dapat niyang... Or, or alam niya na may hindi sila ginagawa or may ginagawa silang mali dun sa scripture. Yeah. Ang gusto niya kasi may, may accompanying miracle dapat eh. Kasi kung word lang, kulang yan, no? Yep. Oo. Mas maganda yung meron pang mga bangkay na nabubuhay. Ganyan. Medyo bongga. Oo, bongga yun eh. Kasi parang kailangan spectacular. Mm. Fireworks. Mas parang kikita ganun. sa takilya yung mga ganyan. Kaya ang sabi dito... In verse 31, ito na yung closing natin. So this is the punchline now. Yeah. Punchline? Oh. Si Abraham na nagbitiw nito, anong sinabi niya? He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Kung hindi naman sila makikinig din sa scripture, o wala na yung mga miracles na yan, parang wala din mangyayari dyan. Right. Tsaka parang yung raising from the dead, yun na yung ultimate miracle talaga. Eh, no? I mean, yun yung pinaka imposibleng gawin. Pero yeah, we see sa history, sa gospel accounts talaga. Ano eh, yung puso ng tao, kung ano talagang gusto niyang habulin, yun na habulin niya regardless of the proofs. You yun, oo. Pero eto, meron tayong alam na kwento sa Gospel of John. Isang Lazarus din. Pero ito, 
historical na figure na Lazarus, kapatid ni Mary and Martha, na nabuhay din naman. But do you think that his resurrection from the dead was sufficient para yung mga tao ay maniwala talaga na si Jesus ang Messiah. Then they want to they tried to kill him, di ba? <laughs> Oo, oh, oh. exact bad trip pa sila. Patayin natin ulit 'yan. Pasisira nga yung aming diskarte. Just to provide the reference for it. It's in John 12 verses 10 and 11 and it says, "The chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him Many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. It's a proven miracle, pero kasi na threaten na ito mga Pharisees na to. Mawawasak na yung kanilang posisyon sa society. Kaya kahit na ano pang milagro yan, wala kami pake because we need to preserve our position in society. This is all about self-preservation. This is no longer about the truth mm. and we don't care about the truth. We care about ourselves. We only care for our own agenda. So, ito yung tanong natin. If miracles can compel faith, can it produce faith? Pag binasa mo yung kaubuan ng gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, buhay ni Jesus, puro miracle siya eh. And thousands were present and were recipients of those miracles. Mm. Pero in the end, no hinarap na si Pilate, pinapili, sinong ilalabas ko, si Jesus or si Barabbas, the people were shouting Barabbas. Mm. Yes. Um, for various reasons. Some of them, they didn't speak out for Jesus. Maybe natatakot sila. Whatever it is, it did not compel a positive action from them to declare their belief in Jesus. Uh-oh. So an example lang on this particular scene. After nung resurrection ni Jesus, when yung guards reported to the Pharisees, kung ano yung nangyari, hindi sila naniwala eh. Hindi. Sinuhulan pa nga eh. Oo, oh, sinuhulan, sinuhulan pa nga. Sinuhulan pa nila eh. O, oh, huwag kayo may ingay oh. ah. Tayimik kayo kung nang bahala sa inyo. Basta huwag nyo na ikakalat yung kwento na yan. Oo. Oh. Kuwento na sa kanila tong crazy story of what happened. They still inserted some lie. Sinuhulan yep. pa nila and then parang ito yung sabihin mong kwento. Parang kahit ano pa mangyari dyan, ayaw namin yung katotohanan na yan. Mas interested mm-hmm. kami sa kung ano yung nasa isip namin. Right. At saka meron pa tayong isang classic example na to eh sa Old Testament. Si Pharaoh. Ilan ba namang miracles ang na-witness nito? Ilang beses na, Ten diba? plagues ba yon? Tama ba yung bilang? Ten plagues. Oo. Oh, oh. May bonus pa yan yung parting of the Red Sea. Harap-harapan mo na nga lahat to eh. Hindi pa talaga na-convince eh. Parang... Hindi eh. Pinatigas mo pa rin yung puso mo. Yung puso niya hindi na bago talaga. Hindi pa rin siya naniwala kay Yahweh. Kaya nga, hindi rin ako convinced na kung miracles lang yung pagbabasihan, I think kulang ang faith natin. Kasi hindi siya nakabase sa turo ng katotohanan. Sa isang mm-hmm. pagtuturo ng tamang doktrina. Pero kasi ang, ang maganda dito yung, kita mo nung una, ultimong yung theology ni Abraham, kinokorek pa talaga ng rich man. Pero pinagdiina na dito ni Abraham that you know what? Scripture is sufficient. Sometimes God will permit miracles to happen, pero hindi yun ang hinahanap dapat. Exactly. Hmm. Ang ganda kasi, God provided us His Word. At sinasabi niya, sapat na ito. Kung gusto ninyong malaman kung ano ang plano ng Diyos, kung gusto ninyong malaman kung ano ang redemptive plan of God, mm-hmm. nandito na nakasulat ng lahat eh. Hindi mo kailangan pa ng proof, ng evidence through miracles. Kasi may mga taong ganun eh. Mm-hmm. Di ba na, unless the Lord does this, hindi ako maniniwala. Right. Lord, bigyan mo ako ng sign. Yan. Uh, tama tong gagawin ko. Para gawin ko to, bigyan mo ako ng sign. Oh. Pero ang klaro naman sa word. Mm-hmm. Nakalagay naman sa word na, well, you do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. <laughs> eh, pero Lord, hindi mo tinatanggal eh. And dyan pa rin siya eh. So, will mo. Maha, matinding hugot to ah. Madalas <laughs> 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 ko marinig. Di ba? Pag tinanggal mo yan, Lord, ibig sabihin, sabihin hindi mo will. Hindi mo will. Eh, hindi mo tinatanggal eh. Di will mo. Naklaro naman ang puro sa Bible. <laughs> In the end, we we will twist scripture according to our hard-heartedness na rin. Mm. And I think we've seen it here. Kahit may bongga pang miracle, kahit may bongga pang sign, kung matigas na talaga ang puso, gagawin ko pa rin kung ano yung gusto ko. Kailangan talaga yung approach natin sa faith and even in the reading of the scripture, dapat talaga submissive na parang, Lord, kung anong sabihin mo dito, kahit masakit sa akin, uh, I will try 
to accept it as it is your command to me. Hindi yung, yun nga, well, it's a tendency for everyone. Na. We try to put our own interpretation, yung favorable interpretation dun sa binabasa natin. When it should be the other way around. So, scripture should be telling us what to do, mm-hmm. not us telling scripture what to say to us. Mm. So, I think at this point, we can identify yung points of reference. And also, we can identify kung ano yung response that Jesus is asking from his audience and also from us. Yeah. So, yung points of reference, the rich man would be, of course, obviously, the Pharisees. Pharisees. <laughs> the Pharisees. Kasi nga, sons of Abraham. Eh. Yeah. Kaya sila kampante na okay sila kay Lord kasi sons of Abraham sila. Eh. Mm-hmm. Diba? Yun yung security blanket nila. Eh. And yun nga, mayaman din sila. They are lovers of money as with verse 14. And then, si Lazarus is... This would be all the people that come to Jesus but are hated and judged, condemned by the Pharisees. At yung mga hindi nila tinulungan. Sinichapwera lang nila itong mga to. Sinichapwera lang nila. Oo. Tsaka, yung sinabi ni Richman dito sa verse 30, alam niya yung sagot, ano yung dapat niyang ginawa to not end up where he was, which is, if someone goes from the dead, they will repent. So, if he repented, he would have ended up right, in a different right, place. Right, right, right. So he knew what he was supposed to do. Tinake for granted lang niya kasi we, mm-hmm. feeling niya siguro. Meh. Oh, oh. So <laughs> it's pero lang niya yung repentance, which I guess assumed that Lazarus did. Was that in spite of his condition, Lazarus believed in what the prophets and Moses were teaching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think it's implied that Lazarus indeed is a true son of Abraham, not in the physical sense but in the spiritual sense. Okay. Puntahan natin yung mga takeaways natin dito. Alam mo, gustong-gusto ko yung sinabi dito kasi ni Abraham eh, about the sufficiency of Scripture. You know, God did not leave us without a witness. Hindi mo na kailangan maghanap pa kung saan-saan. Andito na, pinigay na niya sa atin ang witness niya. And that witness is the Scripture. We can find the truth in Scripture and therefore Scripture, which is the Word, is sufficient. In relation to that, naalala ko yung scene at the end of Luke, after the resurrection. There's two disciples walking to Emma- Emmaus. Emmaus. Tapos, parang talunan na eh. Pinatay na yung Messiah natin. Mm. Uwi na tayo. Wala na to eh. Mm. Tapos si Jesus, buhay na nun, resurrected na. And then nag-sneak siya parang, oh, anong pinag-usapan nyo? Hindi nila na-recognize na si Jesus yon. Tapos, sinasabi nila parang hassel na namatay yung Messiah. Mm. And then sa Luke 24, 25 to 27, And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. diba? The things concerning himself. So, may mga marami yung sasabi na parang, ay, hindi na importante yung Old Testament kasi New Testament na tayo. Parang mm-hmm. may mga ganong klase. Meron, meron ganyan. But so, Old Testament, eh, diba? Pero, mm. as with the words of Jesus, the Old Testament, it's about Jesus. And so, in terms of the movement or the basic structure ng story, there's the beginning, there's the rising action, there's the climax, the falling action, the resolution. Yung mga ganong klaseng story structure. Starting from the Gospels, which is fine, which is totally fine, it's like jumping into the story, pero nandun na tayo sa climax, kung saan yung bida, mm-hmm. ginawa na niya yung mission niya. Parang ganun. Right, yep. right. Which opens so many questions. What is this mission for? And so, I think we have to keep in mind na from Genesis all the way to Revelation, it's about Jesus. Yes. Uh, sa akin yung ano, yung medyo nag-strike sa akin yung sa simula na what the name Lazarus meant, one who is helped by God. Para sa akin, napaka-powerful ng imagery. Yung earthly condition ni Lazarus is so incongruent or layo niya dun sa actual state niya. Itsura lang ni Lazarus, nagihirap siya. Pero actually, he is helped by God. Mm-hmm. For me, it's powerful kasi we have the tendency to judge our closeness to God or our spiritual lives with our lives here on earth. So, alimbawa, nahihirapan ako, dami kong problema. Mm. We always start to question, does God really love me? Does God really care for me? Kasi, hindi ko maramdaman kasi I, I'm having these challenges. Oh, lagi na lang nangyayari to. Lagi na lang ganitong problema. Mm-hmm. I mean, hindi lang personal. I mean, when we look at other people, kaya maraming mga Christian celebrities na biglang nagpo-fall kasi how can I continue to believe in Christ They're suffering. when you know, all these things is happening in earth? This part parable is teaching me or teaching us na don't take what's happening here on earth at face value. Actually, something else is happening on the sidelines na hindi natin nakikita. Even 
if there are troubles that are heaped upon you, you feel that God doesn't love you. That's not the truth. And the truth is that yung help ni God for us is there, doesn't change, and that the ultimate goal is after all of this happens, in the banquet, after life. Mm-hmm. Personally, kailan ba ako naging Christian? Uh, high school? So maybe 30, 25 years? Sumusunod ako kay Christ, pero hindi ko pa rin mag in my mind what the afterlife really means and what the promise of salvation entails. Pero I'm sure, yun nga, uh, it is beyond my comprehension. It's got to be bigger, better, and more beautiful than yun. Mm-hmm. what I can mm-hmm. understand right mm-hmm. now. For me, that's yeah. a source of faith and a source of courage. Kahit nahirapan ako ngayon dito, I have something to look forward to. Ang hirap talaga magkaroon ng eternal perspective na kaya nating tumalon from what we see here and then look forward to the future. And that future is so much better because we'll be in the presence of the Father. Father for eternity. Yung trajectory na yun, ang hirap makita. Upon repentance, meron ka nitong assured hope na ito. Eh. When you have that assured hope, nababago din pati yung mga desires. Hindi na yung, kunwari, dati, kung money yung main desire mo, yung nagdidictate na buhay mo, is hindi na yung desire ng money. Yung desire mo for God, yung desire mo to serve Him, to bring Him glory. Yung sabi ni Pastor Rainier na may eternal perspective, yun na yung nagdidictate ng trajectory ng buhay mo. And, yeah. kumbaga, yung buhay ng mga Pharisees na sobrang lakas kasi nung desire nila for money, yung desire nila for position, for power. Bale, wala sa kanila yung repentance, yung assured hope na yun, na nakasulat sa scriptures. Pero bale, wala yun sa kanila kasi napakalakas ng desire for money or power or position. Yeah, so parang pinapakita ng Panginoon yung kanyang eternal wonder and love and a place with no tears, di ba? <laughs> exactly. Revelation All things will 21. be good and everything. And we're looking at that and it's saying, I'd rather keep my job, Lord. Yeah, I'd rather yeah. have my cars and my nice condo and my... <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. What? Yep. Ipagpapalit mo talaga yun? Yeah. Going back to what Abraham said no, dun sa rich man, sabi niya, they should listen to Moses and the prophets. Kasi ano ba sinabi niyang Moses and the prophets? It's exactly what we've all been saying, na parang huwag kang mag-concentrate na magkamal ng sariling riches mo dito. You should obey God, do these things, take care of others, love your neighbor. Yan yung sinasabi ni Moses and the prophets. Eh. So kaya sinasabi, ang sagot sa kanya ni Abraham was very, very appropriate. And that was also yung patama sa Pharisees. Kasi if you are actually listening to what you're preaching or understanding what you're preaching, you will not be acting this way. No? Hindi kayo naka-concentrate sa power. And not just that. Not just that. Because there might be a tendency na it might sound like ano sinasabi lang nila Moses and the prophets. It's just do good stuff. Eh. But if you Mm-mm. check the whole thing, it's people trying to be good and they couldn't. Mm-hmm. There's a repentance but there also is a new heart. Diba? As with uh, Ezekiel. Right. Mm-hmm. And also in Jeremiah. Heart of flesh. Oh, I will give you a new heart. Not a heart of stone but a heart of flesh. Which we experience through Jesus Christ because the Old Testament is about Jesus then. Jesus Christ is the one who will give us this new life to be able to actually follow, obey, and love God with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. I, I think this parable, although it may sound so harsh, medyo masyadong diretso dun sa Pharisees, but this is still a demonstration of God's grace. Habang buhay pa kayo mga pariseyo, bago na kayo. Do not harden your hearts. You preach. So yeah, so that was the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, so Luke 16, 19 to 31. And I guess to our listeners, our choices here matter. We just hope that you will choose wisely. Right. Habang may panahon, please turn to God. Choose God. Yep. See you in the next episode. Bye. 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 Thanks for joining us in the UCM Interface Bible Study Podcast. If you want to know more about our ministry, follow UCM Interface on Facebook and Instagram or email us at ucminterface at gmail.com. Join us in Union Church of Manila, Rada Corner Legaspi, Makati City.